This is Boxes and Briefs, a podcast with real-life business stories. But we will be asking the hard questions and challenging traditions. So broaden your thinking with fresh perspectives and solve problems for business success. Hello there and welcome to another episode of Boxes and Briefs. My name's Lisa. I'm Kelly. Kelly is with us for the first time. Kelly is an import from Australia. (laughs) Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Excellent. And today we have with us Georgia Patton. Georgia, you are the entrepreneur behind Board George. I am. Sunglasses. Yes. Very excited to have you here. So it started as a hobby in 2019 and it's a brand that is now featured in 90 stores across New Zealand and Australia. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You've got major retailers like Flo and Frankie, Max and Repertoire. Mm-hmm. So good. Tell us the Board George story. How did you get into sunglasses? Um, it's a bit of a long story and probably quite different to a lot of people because I don't think I ever came in with the mindset of starting a business. Um, so I guess if I take it back, maybe, how old am I now? About 10 years, nine years ago, I moved to London. Mm -hmm. um, And before then, I'd basically never worn a pair of sunnies. I just could never fit any that I liked. I never liked how they looked on my face. So you Um, just squinted? I just squinted. (laughs) I was like, crow's feet were going to come in hard. (laughs) Um, And then, yeah, a couple years on when I was leaving, I went and did about three, three and a half months in Europe. Mm -hmm. And while I was over there, I saw all the sunglasses that were available in like the underground markets in Turkey and Morocco. And I ended up coming home with about like six pairs of sunnies. What and was so different about them? I just thought the styles were different. I think it was because there was just so many in front of me. I had so many to choose from. Um, I also think maybe I had a little bit more confidence mm-hmm. after living by myself at 19 for two and a half years. That would do it. Um, so I think there's like a lot that went into it. But all my European photos were full of different sunglasses And that's where I guess the love came from. And coming back to New Zealand, I fell back into the same monotonous role of running physiotherapy clinics. Mm -hmm. As much as I loved it and I got paid really well, um, it was just extremely boring. Mm -hmm. And that's when I saw what one of my other friends was doing and she was starting a jewellery business. So I thought, oh, I'll just start a sunglasses hobby on the side. I chose to import Sunnies never really thinking of it as a business, more of just like creative outlet, um, creating an Instagram, you know, just all the fun stuff. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's kind of where it all where it all started. And it wasn't till a couple years in that I really thought, okay, I actually have a business now. Like it wasn't intentional, but here we are. Okay. Yeah, that's the start of it. I can continue on if wow. you want. <laughs> so the glasses you imported, they were from the place that you found them? No. So I ended up going through Alibaba as most startups mm. do. Right. Um, finding a lot of manufacturers, getting a lot of samples. They were all pre-designed, um, just made from plastic at the start. And that's what I sold for the first maybe eight months was just okay. pre-designed sunnies that had my logo engraved on the side all right so you're buying products Mm -hmm. you're putting your logo on what the packaging of them on the actual sunny so we're having them engraved on the side yeah Yeah. okay and so what was your cost versus what you were selling for them how what was the was it a big difference or just a nah not really they were cheap man they were cheap and that was part of the problem was I loved the styles that I was putting out and so did everybody but I just wasn't proud of the quality Uh so I loved what they looked like but I hated how they felt Um, And that was kind of the push and pull of those first few months was Mm -hmm. trying to figure out, do I continue this or do I take that next step and start looking for more premium or Mm -hmm. start designing? Um, And that's when I kind of made the call to learn how to design. Wow. Yeah. So what was the thing that really shifted you into that version of yourself to be Um, the designer? Probably I just love the creative aspect of what I had done for the past year. So I loved building a community on Instagram. I loved learning how to do all the design work. I loved the photo shoots and the photography. All of that aspect of it was just like, I just kind of found what I loved. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think just the challenge of teaching myself all this new stuff was what I was enjoying while I was at this boring job. So I think it's well known by now that I started this company while I was working for the other company. Uh And I started most of it while I was on desk of the other company. Oh dear. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd get my work done at that company by about 11 a.m. and then till five I'd work on board George and taught myself how to design behind that computer. Why that name? Board George? Yeah. So on that um, three and a half month trip I mentioned, yeah. I did that solo as well. Um, and I was 20, I think, at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted a way to keep my family and friends up to date with all my travels and antics and God, there were some antics. And I started a travel blog. Ah. Um, and it was called Not So Bored George. Because you were no longer bored. Because I was no longer bored. And moving back to New Zealand and starting this business, like boredom was my, just, I was so bored. Yeah. Um, mm. And coming up with names that just made sense. It was really catchy. Yeah. It kind of encompanied, encompanied? Is that the word? <laughs> yes. oh, encompassed? Yes. Yep. Um, <laughs> like the feeling at the time when I started. And... It just made sense. And it, I guess the name's kind of been the biggest focal point of the business, to be honest. It's like memorable. It's, yeah, it's yeah. memorable. It's captured a lot of attention. Yeah. And there's always a lot of questions. So, yeah, I made a good good call it's on that intriguing. one. It's intriguing. It kind of draws <laughs> you in a bit. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, so when did you feel like you'd actually made it? When, it, when did it mm. feel like it was a business? What happened? <laughs> um, I think oh, the first thing that springs to mind, I was just selling online for the first maybe – six months once I just started designing yeah. um, and I had a optician reach out and want to stock us <gasps> and I, I remember I was in Fongamata on a holiday girls trip yeah. and I saw the email come through and I was like what like I'm not even a like a business why does somebody want to stock me and that was kind of the point where I was like oh maybe I can actually make something of this okay. um, mm-hmm. and I booked a trade show within the week and I think we were at the trade show in six months and um, from there it was pretty much a business we landed 13 stockists at that first trade show wow um, I'm gonna guess that that started with a girls weekend conversation about it the the to, whole idea of going to a trade show and maybe oh, yeah. pushing it that way probably probably there's probably a lot of gin involved a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fake confidence yeah yeah no and then yeah mum came along to the trade shows with me yeah I think I, I was still quite young maybe 24 mm-hmm. um and yeah the biggest break at that trade show was Sills and Co Caroline Sills okay they mm-hmm. came by they loved it and they took me on to six of their stores straight off the bat I think yep. I only wow. had two styles Wow. Um, and that was, yeah, probably the moment where I was like, okay, I've got something. If they want me, like this big company that's been around for 20 plus years, yeah. mm-hmm. probably way more than that, yeah. um, then I've got something. Okay, so that was your moment of, okay, I've got a business. Mm. Mm-hmm. When was your moment like, I've made it? Uh, it doesn't happen <laughs> often. <laughs> no. Um, when you asked me this earlier, I think the first thing that popped into my head, and I think it's quite sad to say, sad to say, I don't know if that's the way to say this year we won excellence in marketing for girls in business. Hey, congratulations. And yeah, thank you. It was just a moment of like standing up in front of 700 like business women. Yes, mm. I was there. Were you there? Yeah, I was. <laughs> and although it's five years into my business journey, that's probably the first time where I was like, I must be doing something right. Uh-huh. Like that, It's the recognition, It's right? the recognition. Yeah. It's the people maybe looking up to what you do as well yep, rather yep. than you just feeling like you're stumbling your way through yeah mm-hmm. and it's probably the first year I feel confident in the decisions that I'm making as well instead of again just stumbling my way through yeah yep. so what, what did the judges have to say what was excellent about your marketing is it the photo shoots and the Instagram that you're having fun with they didn't give me feedback <gasps> oh you just want it I just want it hey. I should probably ask one day but <laughs> <laughs> I just took it and ran <laughs> Do it. Yep. Take yep. the trophy yep. and run. Yep. No, it was good. Um, so you've got the highs. Yeah. I want to ask you about the lows. There's many. What's There's so many. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But what's the biggest setback or the biggest failure that you've gotten over? Because you're still going. Mm. Yeah, and there's probably failures weekly. My partner says I don't run a business. I just like fight fires, oh. which I think mm. is most business owners. Yeah. Like yep. a new one genuinely pops up every day. Yeah. Um, even this morning but the biggest one I'd probably say was when when we landed Flo and Frankie um, that was a huge order yeah like they said can you get an order to us that you think would suffice our 16 stores so I put together an order of what I thought they would need Mm -hmm. and they came back and doubled it (gasps) 
Yeah, that was my face. Um, I couldn't, like, honestly couldn't believe it. But that sounds good. Why is this a bad? Because stock. Uh, Okay. Because you meet them in August, you get all the invoicing done, and then they expect it in September, October. And we have a four-month lead time. Four months. Four months. Four months. Like, organisation is key. So that was, um, we just thought, okay, well, let's get this done. So me, my mum, and my partner spent, I was like five days straight, mm-hmm. packing into boxes, checking quality, mm-hmm. until we realised that we didn't have enough cases. Mm-hmm. And I had done a case order a couple of weeks prior, and so I knew they were coming, so I felt quite relaxed and then I thought wonder where they are Mm -mm. oh no (laughs) yeah and uh, the whole shipment on sea freight was lost no yeah just disappeared and just disappeared did you ever find it we found it so (sighs) (laughs) these are learnings these are learnings um it was one of those things where you quickly need it. You just think, okay, get your manufacturer to order, organize the shipping mm-hmm. instead of going through your freight forwarder. Mm-hmm. And I got them to organize it. Okay. And when you're with a freight forwarder, they manage your shipments from China to New Zealand. They send you daily updates of where it's at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Through your manufacturers, no. It's basically just here's your tracking number and it goes into the nowheres until it turns up at your front oh, doorstep. Gosh. And I kept asking them, I need an update. And they just said, we can't find it. We don't know where it is. And it was like that for a couple of weeks. So oh. within those couple of weeks, me, my mum and my partner were going through all of our pre-packed shelves on a full wall. It's like a five meter wall, mm-hmm. unboxing everything, tipping the boxes and cases out and repurposing them into the Flo and Frankie order. Mm-hmm. While I did another order of two and a half thousand cases from mm-hmm. a different manufacturer so that we could at least say that we were having more to come at a yeah. minimum of three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was probably one of the most stressful three weeks of my life. Yeah. Mm. The second order arrived, we got everything out, and then the disappearing order turned up in about a month. So it was about two and a half months wow. missing. Wow. Like you didn't just keep chasing and wait. You yeah. yeah. About it. Well, yeah, that's the kind of thing is you just can't, you can't wait for these things. You could be waiting mm. forever. How quickly did Flo and Frankie sell then? Sell out of that stock? Yeah. Well, they did another order within four months. Wow. Um, and it's kind of continued like that. It's been one of our biggest breaks, I think. So the pain was worth it? Yeah, it kind of got you through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was so yes. much stress. But yeah, you got to laugh at these things now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there anything that surprised you in the journey so far? Um, like negative or positive? Or both? Something you didn't expect. Um, probably, oh God, there's so many. I'm putting out as many fires as I do, it's just constant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm constantly on alert for things that I've missed or things that are going to potentially screw up and having backup plans. That's just, yeah, always being on, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> on the lookout. Um, but one of the positive things I probably didn't expect from this, and again, I didn't expect to be so far deep into business, but is the networking of it all and the yeah. friends mm. and the business community and the woman business community. It's changed my life and my like friendships and my knowledge and my confidence. And that's like probably been the best thing that's come from it. You, you found your that? people. Found my people. Found your yeah. people. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask, the next question was actually about um, the emotional roller coaster of running cool. a business. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're putting out fires every day, which... That sounds just horrible. What have you done to maintain mental health to get through them? What is What are your secrets to <laughs> staying sane? I don't have any. I'm probably the worst person to ask. Oh. Um, I, well, it's probably a bad week to ask that too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, <sighs> well, you spoke about a nutritionist. There's going <sighs> to the gym. Yeah, there's all of that. I would like to say I have it under wraps and I have my stress levels under wraps and I don't burn out, but it seems to be a more common thing the further we go along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think that's because there's way more stress and I feel super under-equipped for dealing with the amount of things I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know, like I didn't go to uni, I didn't study, I don't know financials, everything that I'm doing is new. Is this like imposter syndrome? I guess you're uh, doing, to other people, like you said, people who are looking up to you for that award that you've won, right? Yeah. Mm. You're now 
they're looking to you. Maybe this is the formula for how Fake I could do it. Fake it till you make it. It's what I live by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the reason I probably have so many mistakes is because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, burnout's just something I'm trying to deal with at the moment. Okay. And mm-hmm. trying to take more weekends off, which I have to admit, I don't have many weekends off. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're, we're in the um, admission stage. <laughs> oh, I've probably been admitting it for the past three years, my partner will say. Yeah. There's a constant yeah. thing I'll say to friends and family, oh, like I've got a free month next month. And then that month will end up being the busiest month of the year. And then that month I'll be like, oh, November looks really good. And then <laughs> <laughs> and it just snowballs, it just snowballs and spirals. Yes. Um, but then again, I'm addicted to the chaos and they're like um. work. So it's this self it's a cycle. It's, it's a cycle <laughs> that yeah. I just need to get on top of. And so many people I know are the same. Yes. Um, if I don't work, I feel guilty for not working. Mm-hmm. But then while I'm working, I'm feeling guilty for not just lying on the couch without my laptop. Uh. And it's, yeah, it's continuous. I'd like yeah. to think I'll get better soon. And I think I probably will. But it, it'll come with having more staff and more trust in people and more, yeah. more hard thing, right? Yeah. yeah. There's trusting other people to take some of the load for you. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank it's you probably for not being you want to hear. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, so I do. Good. I do go to the gym a lot. I go for a lot of walks. I listen yeah. to a lot of podcasts. I do mm. all that sort of stuff. But yeah. that's just the things to keep you semi sane. Yeah, yeah. semi sane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is no magic like pill that you can take to make no. it completely no. sane. No. Business ownership is hard. Yeah, and I think while you're in the grind of it, and while you can see the growth, like I know that I can get so much bigger. Yeah, I think if I was happy with where we're at, I would be able to be a lot more. Um, free with my time yep. mm-hmm. whereas I can see we're kind of at this pivotal point where if we keep going at the rate we are then we can so you've just got to find hit strategies where we go. to keep yeah. you sane exactly mm. yeah and happy yeah yeah I have this conversation often it's called choose your hard yeah. yeah and it's basically like you can apply it to a relationship whether you are married divorcing yeah. separating single dating whether you are employed self-employed contracting all of it is hard. Yeah. Mm. You've got to choose which one you want to you're happy to be in. Yeah. yeah. But it's all hard. Yeah. yeah. It's like when people say, have you found the work-life balance? And it's like, well, you can have work-life balance if that's what you're looking for. But like while we don't have a family and we don't have kids, yep. I kind of can afford to not have the work-life balance right now. Yeah. Mm. And like choose to not have it. Yeah. And I think that's all right to tell people. Everyone's like, well, you work too much. And it's like, well, I don't do really have get, anything I else to do. Lot. I get that a lot. (laughs) I quite like it. I do too. And the way that I frame it is that work is my life, life is my work. Mm. Mm. So all of these things that I do actually all tie in together for my my happiness. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe I'm working towards one day when I can have work-life balance, but I'm doing the work now so that in two years I can have what I want. Yeah. Yeah. When you have the time and energy now, so you yeah. don't have to give it up later. Yep. Yeah, and exactly. My partner works shift work, so he's mm. often not home. Yeah, yeah. So I Perfect have opportunity six hours every evening yes. to sit down and watch some trashy reality TV and dig into some work and not have anybody. Not, you. not feel guilty. Yeah. I mean, I still feel guilty, but not have anyone else make me feel guilty. <laughs> yeah, shall I question? Yeah. What's your junk TV of choice? <sighs> I'm like reality TV. Like Which obsessed. One? Um, Love Island, both UK and US. If mm-hmm. nobody watches US, watch it. It is elite. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten my mum addicted to it. Real Housewives. Yep. Oh, I've just watched uh, the yeah. Mormon one. Amazing. Yep. All mm. of it. Give it Selling to me. Selling Sunset's one of my Selling days. Sunset. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'll binge it all in one night. Boxes and Briefs is promptly brought to you by Gilligan Shepherd, the problem solvers in business. All right, Georgia. A David Award for most outstanding established business the girls in business award for excellent in marketing you're obviously setting yourself apart from the rest where else are you going to go on this awards journey um so we have for the past two years also been um finalists for best emerging business for the two degrees business awards i think back then it was the westpac business awards yeah Mm -hmm. um and i have done a little bit of work with auckland business chamber so they were like you need to do it again this year okay Mm -hmm. um so i just thought screw it and applied for every category (laughs) okay it's a lot of work though right yeah. it's a lot of work ai helps a lot now yeah mm-hmm. um plus i had many plane rides at the start of the year that i just spent hours riding yeah mm-hmm. um and we landed finalist in three categories this year so we're Ooh. in for best emerging strategy and planning and excellence in marketing so we're actually going in with three 
finalists this year. So that's exciting. That's wow. pretty cool. I'll actually be pretty sad if we don't win <laughs> win one oh. this year. You'll still get to go to a fancy dinner though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we do. And get dressed up and bring bring the parents and the family. So that's yeah, always yeah, fun. Yeah. Nice. Have a little celebration of how far you've come. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's an expensive night though, man. They ask a lot for those tickets. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Okay. It's got to be worth it. it. It's got to yeah. be worth it. Let's win. <laughs> <laughs> Funny we could vote. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not a voting one. I know. Oh, okay. All right. Um, share a story of a time when you had to pivot or change a strategy. Like you've just mentioned you're a finalist for the strategy one. Mm. So what is it? What have you had to chop and change quickly? Yeah. Um, probably one of the biggest ones that we've been working on over the past 12 months is I would say 12 months ago we were predominantly a wholesale business. So mm-hmm. we would have been... of our revenue coming through wholesalers, 30% through e-com. And when I started to do my research into how much more we could be making through Mm e-com, I decided to put the time into marketing, into advertising, and Mm -hmm. make that switch and try to make us more of an e-com brand. And so the past 12 months have been a lot and a lot of money put into brand awareness. Yeah, Yeah. Um, We've employed a ads buyer so we do google and insta and facebook ads now which we never Mm -hmm. did last year Mm -hmm. which has made a huge difference um how huge oh huge huge so uh over the past 12 months we're now 70 percent e-com 30 percent wholesale oh it's completely switched so it's completely switched um we're still doubling our revenue yeah and with this change i think we can increase it a lot more yeah Mm -hmm. um and it's been fun like having way more control over your business yeah and doing fun marketing activations we've got some real fun stuff planned for over summer um actually getting involved with the community getting involved at festivals yeah just getting our name out there in different ways and trying to think of marketing in a different way than just putting five grand behind an ad campaign yeah yeah trying to spend that five grand getting yeah. double the mm-hmm. amount of faces yeah. at different mm-hmm. events. So yeah. that sort of thing has been fun. Yeah. Um, and it's made a real big difference to our brand awareness, I think, throughout yeah. New Zealand. I think um, marketing, physical marketing activations are going to become more and more popular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that we went to a lot of digital, especially COVID. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody was stuck at home, so you could only, only access them do it. through yeah. a screen. Yeah. And, um, yeah, old school stuff's coming back. I think mm. so. And although... We, for the past year, have also done PR and influencer events, which yep. I think they still do have their place. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I think getting more involved with your community and your like actual customer is yep. going to take the forefront okay. yep. and making them feel special. And yep. we are already so involved with our customers. Like mm-hmm. the transparency we show through our social media, the customers already feel like they're a part of it. So if we give them another step into the business by being able to come in, I love that. And do activations with us. I think we'll have that really cool touch point. Yeah. 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 Raving fans. Exactly. (laughs) Okay. So expanding into 90 stores is impressive. And now you've got the e-com is now 70%. You're getting out there. It's face-to-face stuff. What about the mistakes, the negotiations, the figuring out which partnerships, the trying to trust your gut, work it out, all those kind of stories. Mm -hmm. Trust your gut. That's... um I, I think maybe a couple of months ago, I would have said that I completely trust my gut and mm-hmm. I trust my intuition with people. Mm-hmm. Probably over the last few months, I'm starting to question that again. Mm. Um, Did one just sort of slip under the radar kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Putting mm-hmm. trust in the wrong people, I think, is just something that... I mean, it will always happen. One of the biggest ones, I think, that comes to mind was maybe two years ago, I was working with a business coach who I still love, she's fantastic, Mm -hmm. um, but told me to go to an accounting firm. And I wasn't sure if I was big enough for it at that stage. I Mm -hmm. now know I definitely wasn't, Mm -hmm. but I trusted the advice and Mm -hmm. went and did it. And probably one of the biggest, most costly mistakes I have made in business was trusting these people with both my money and with my business. They're quite a big firm, actually. And yeah, the... The, well, what we had to go through to get them to stop taking money out of our bank account was wild oh, for number wow. one trying to tell them we weren't getting taught what we wanted to get taught yeah. for our financials was number two yeah. um, and then once I was out of that it was a real eye opener yeah. that 
nobody knows your business as well as you do. Yeah. yeah. And to not always trust the people who are trying to, they are trying to help you, but sometimes, yeah, you just need to follow your gut. And my gut was telling me something at the start. Yeah. Yeah. But you tell yourself, no, these people know best. Um, yeah, it's hard, isn't it's it? It's hard. Like balance. I've definitely come from a world, um, you trust your doctor. Yeah. yeah. Whatever your doctor says, oh my God, he's a doctor. He, he knows yeah. everything. But actually, Not if always. you do a little hissy fit and you, you know, <laughs> stamp your foot. It's funny say, you say that because I've just changed doctors yeah. and I remember calling my sister <laughs> and my sister just changed doctors and we both had a conversation. Oh my God, how have we been with this doctor for 20 years? Yeah. yeah. Like you just stay and you trust and you think yeah. they know yeah. better until yeah. you go to somebody else and you go, what was I doing? What was I doing? Yeah. But I think the best relationships, the best trust is when you've got an understanding of what each other brings to the table. Yeah. Mm. And that goes for your accountant. Exactly. goes for your mm. doctor. Realizing that you can listen to your own body. You yep. know what's yeah. up. Exactly. And it's, if you've got yeah, an accountant exactly right. and a legal person and anybody else that you bring on board, if you've both got that mutual respect, it just makes for such a better relationship. Mutual to respect, the that's the biggest thing. Yeah. 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 And there's got to be that. And if there's not, then it's skewed. And yep. that's mm. when it all kind of crumbles. Yeah. 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 Finding all right. Your, finding what else people. you got? Um, mistakes, you said? Yeah. Mm. There's lots. Um, <laughs> I think the funniest one was last year, and I talk about this now. I don't think I would have talked about it at the time because it was honestly just, oh, uh-huh. it was hilariously stressful oh. and just the things we did to get over. So we had pre-sold about 250 of our Pipers, which are our best-selling mm-hmm. sunglasses, mm-hmm. and they had been in pre-sale for about four weeks, and they landed on the doorstep, and they had the wrong print on them. So on the inside, they said bioacetate, which means biodegradable acetate, rather than just acetate, because we run both of those products side by side. Okay. okay. And so we physically can't sell them because it's, it's they're misleading. Not misleading. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so we have people that are already waiting four weeks and have mm. paid. All these people have paid. Yes. Mm. And to send it back to China to have redone and back would be probably another three to four weeks by the time you include shipping. And we had stockists waiting for Christmas because this was end of November. So if we didn't get them for Christmas, then we would probably have to pay money back to stockists. Like it was, it was a nightmare. Um, And so I spent a couple of days going through hardware stores, (laughs) looking for either polishing machines or grinding machines or acetones. Yeah. Oh my God. I went through so many pairs of sunglasses testing things. I would take it into like Bunnings and Mitre 10 and be like, how can I remove this? And I bought full on polishing kits. I did, I bought everything and we landed on a process. We had my dad's double garage set up with trestle tables Mm -hmm. and his big polishing wheel. Mm -hmm. And we had me with nail polish remover Uh and a cotton bud and I had to wipe it off Mm -hmm. and then it would ruin the cover of the sunnies. So then we had car wax and we put the car wax on and then we had the polishing wheel and then we used the polishing wheel (laughs) and we did this for 250 pairs of sunglasses and got them out of the door on the Monday. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yeah, you're laughing now, but I can imagine. Were you pulling like all-nighters trying to get them? Oh, it wasn't exactly all-nighters, but if my dad didn't help, I would have been... I would have been in trouble. It was yeah. it was so funny watching us do this in their ho- like house garage, trying to get these sunnies out. Like you know, a well known sunglasses brand doing this, but it's kind of the things behind the scenes that nobody knows at the time. Yeah, mm. and they came out perfect. Like they were perfect, and you would just never know that there was so much work drama behind. Yeah. yeah, that one pair of sunnies. Yeah, oh, it was wow. a lot, but we do laugh at that now. Well, you've gone through a lot. You've being quite transparent about how it's not easy Mm. it is hard and the hard continues Mm. what when people come up against these things a lot of people will just go this is too hard and stop Mm. yeah so what is it resilience and I think you learn it I don't think you come into business with it I don't think I was very resilient at the start um but you kept going yeah Mm. I did I think, again, I love the challenge. Yeah. And yeah. I love to push myself and see how far I can push it. Okay. Um, I like to learn as well. <laughs> and I think the more mistakes happen, which I've said before, like so many have happened, the more you learn to just kind of laugh about it. Mm-hmm. And 
yeah, the other day I had our special edition limited collaboration boxes printed from mm-hmm. China. Mm-hmm. Like paid a lot of money, you know, limited runs you pay a lot of money for and they arrive and there's two spelling mistakes on the boxes. This oh is like my. premium, premium. And my employee, Charlie, goes, you haven't seen it, have you? And I was like, seen what? And she goes, you've spelt exclusive, excludive on the box. And I went, oh, oh, really? And I read it. And as I read it, I noticed I also spelt sunglasses wrong. You did? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the box. So two mistakes in one sentence. Oh. And I just laughed. Oh. And she said to me, why are you laughing? And I just went, well, what else am I supposed to do? Like, this launch is in two weeks. Like. So that is a perfect description mm. of resilience. So I'm yeah. kind of at the point now where it's like you laugh or cry and laughing is yep. just so much easier. Yeah. Yep. Um, if I mean, if something else happened that day, I'd probably cry. But yep. if it's yep. just one a day, you can cope. And you just kind of get better at figuring out the you know, the issues. So that afternoon, I just ordered a sticker from a manufacturer down the road and we placed mm. the sticker over the top. Um, mm. And you just figure these things I out. I just imagine these people listening to the podcast going to go get a pair of sunglasses and try and figure out if there's been nail polish and car wax on it. Oh, totally. <laughs> and look at the stickers. Oh, yep. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's well known on my social media that I can't spell. I have people. Yeah, no, it's it's a thing. It's just part of the brand personality at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you can make yeah. it intentional now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every so post good. I have somebody messaging me, hey, babe, this is spelled wrong. Oh, cool, thanks. <laughs> Love that. It's just so authentic, though. Yeah. You're so normal. Mm. Oh yeah, it's yeah. It's actually daily. My mum says, "Do you want me to spell check for you?" And I go, "Well, yeah, but you'd have to be next to me. Like, how many <laughs> emails do I send? How many posts do I post? Yeah, how many yeah. things yeah. do I sign off of a day? Like, I'd need a permanent person." Yep. Yeah. Do you not have Grammarly here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they still slip by. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much for your time. If our listeners want to purchase Board George or get in touch with yep. you, how do they do that? Um, so go to our Instagram and follow board George or yep. for me it is georgia.pattern or you've got the website boardgeorge.com love it Beautiful. thank you so much for your time it's been brilliant thank you <laughs> Boxes and Briefs is proudly brought to you by Gilligan Shepherd, the problem solvers in business <laughs>